there, and welcome to Star Wars Music Minute, where we celebrate the music and sound of Star Wars five cinematic minutes at a time. I'm Chrysanthi Tan, and today's episode is based on minutes 96 through 100 of Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. In this set of minutes, Captain Phasma apprehends Finn, Rose, and DJ, that's his name, Leia stuns Poe, Holdo and Leia say their emotional goodbye, Snoke continues to bully Rey and do lots of really creepy stuff, and the Resistance set out for Crate. And my guest today is Justin Scheid, who is a sort of longtime collaborator of mine, you know, last couple years. And um, I went to school with Justin. He's an amazing musician and electronic producer and teacher and um, person in general. You may recognize him if you watch the Bad Batch music commentary that I've been doing on the Star Wars Music Minute YouTube channel because he joins in on those. And now he's on the main show, and I'm super excited to have you, Justin. Thank you so much for having me here. Um, the Bad Batch series has been so much fun uh, to to do with you and and with James. Um, so I'm super excited to finally get on the, <laughs> to get on the the minute by minute <laughs> one um, because those have been really really fun to follow. <laughs> Yay! Thank you. Um, thanks for thanks for listening. Um, and of course, thanks for joining me on the Bad Batch stuff. It's it's um. It's really it's really nice to talk to someone who knows so much about sound design and also just who I know loves Star Wars so much. Um, I thought of you for these minutes specifically because I know that you <laughs> like ca uh, Captain Phasma, yes. and this is the first time we get to see her. Yes, also, I am a, there's a lot of music I, stuff happening too. There, and a lot happens in five minutes. It's sometimes amazing how drawn out a single scene can be. And then also how many things you can cram into such little time. Um, when I was rewatching these five minutes over and over, just you know, to catch all the different things, it's just a lot. You're right, a lot happens. We get Captain Phasma appears, Rose, Finn, and DJ get captured. Leia appears, shoots Poe. There's an emotional goodbye. We hear Snoke and John Williams plays mind games with us as I'm sure we're going to talk about yeah. <laughs> later yeah, on. Yeah. Um, and then Poe wakes up and there's a new plan and we're introduced <laughs> to Crate. It's like, oh my goodness, so much happens in five minutes. Um, I'm glad uh, I wasn't the only person who had that that thought. Um, yeah, the sense of time, like in breaking these movies down five minutes at a time, I mean, I just feel like I'm getting like jostled. Like my sense of time is just so off kilter. but I, it's an amazing testament to how film can sort of manipulate that. Like the most extreme example of five minutes that go by super fast for me is when Luke is on his island doing his thing and Ray's following him. And we just get, that's the episode that I called, I think, <laughs> Luke's music video. Where it's just like five minutes basically of Luke catching fish, like milking right. the sea siren, <laughs> like pole vaulting across cliffs with like the music. And it just goes by so fast, those five minutes. But this set of five minutes, oh my gosh, when I was reviewing just this chunk, I kept thinking like, am I accidentally playing the movie? Because like way too much played. Like, I just want to hear right. five minutes. And then I keep kept looking and, you know, being like, damn, this is part of the same five minutes. It, it, exactly. There's. It's almost like its own mini episode <laughs> yeah. if they had like released these movies more like tv episodes kind of a thing this would have been like one whole episode i feel like so much happened totally totally um so the themes that we get we get a lot of themes in this set of minutes some of them more uh classic i guess you could say like ones that we've heard a lot already we get an instance of the main title. We get an instance mm -hmm. of the force theme, which, you know, we'll, we'll talk about when those happen. But um, also pay attention uh, for longtime listeners, for listeners who have been through, been with me from the beginning of the movie. Um, we're going to be talking about some of the smaller ones, too, that if I go back in time and look at episode two, Resistance Light Motifs, um, I think I may have mentioned a couple of these and at the time been like, oh, but this one's not really a big deal. This one's like a small one. And let me tell you, um, they become a bigger deal increasingly. So, <laughs> so that's kind of, that's kind of fun that I'm sort of, um, 
I've I've been surprised in this process too. Like, and catching on all all, all these different little things that just kind of get bigger and bigger. Yeah, I know what you mean. Yeah, or uh, like things that I thought would not be as big a deal as they were ended up being so omnipresent. It's like really, right. it's really funny. Right. Yeah, to go back in time and be like, I can't believe I had trouble remembering that one or or something. Because now it's like off the top of my head. So many of them. Like one of them would be like the the tension, um, or like that that type of thing. Right. Uh, and I've actually been noticing it in Bad Batch too, which is hilarious. Um, it's one but, of my favorite things about John Williams, though. Is like they and and the, and specifically Star Wars music, since it's so based around like little leap motifs and uh, little. Uh, or you larger themes. It's kind of a sometimes the score is like a musical puzzle, and it's it's how you or or quilt you and it's it's how they're weaving in these familiar themes with new stuff. And it's kind of like oh, I hear it when this character's on you know on on or not. Which I was going to talk about a little bit about the main title theme and how it's you know it was used so traditionally just for one character. Yeah, um, in, the, in the original series. I mean. How about let's go like sort of in chronological order. So yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So so like at the beginning, um, this is we're kind of on the tail end of what happened in the last set of minutes, which was um, DJ's like slicing into the first order, into the supremacy, and you know mm-hmm. they kind of think they might get away with this, and we start this set of minutes with no FN two one eight seven. Yeah, we have uh-huh. the Captain Phasma calling him out. Stormtroopers, yeah. the whole thing, and we have um, uh, the evil BB Nine E, uh, and uh, with his menacing, yet still adorable, <laughs> um, little FM frequency brand, little I, in the sense. How would you describe? Would, how would you describe his sound? Um, uh, uh, professionally, like a like little farty sounds. Um, to be a hundred percent. Can honest. you imitate that? <laughs> kind of a. <laughs> in a way it's it's very wavy it's very it's very it's, it's what i was trying to do and uh uh to, to set up but i, I couldn't i couldn't find the right thing yeah. but um uh quick enough but anyways um it's this it's, it's just the, such the opposite of bb8 bb8 is it's 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 got this wow like this like kind of almost like wally if anyone's familiar with mm-hmm. that uh that with that film the pixar kind of yeah. pixar uh, uh, he's got that wow <laughs> kind of a sound where uh, BB9E uh, has just this, this almost sassy little little kind of PFFFFTC in comics, like a, pfft, mm. that kind of a feel to it. Mm. Um, with, I don't know. I, I think it's even though it's it's like evil, it's it's a cute little thing. But yeah, so we get this big fanfare of stormtroopers. Uh, a uh, uh, high commander, like everyone shows up to the party. I know, if you think it's about it, like <laughs> very intimidating. So, and and then and then we get uh, uh, this wonderful timpani arrival of uh, Captain Phasma. Mm-hmm. And, uh, this, this and if anyone wants to know more about timpani transitions, uh, check out the episode called "Timpani In, Timpani Out." <laughs> oh. um, it's 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 it's. It's a. It's one of my. It's it's one of my favorite. I, I would call it mu- music score tropes. Yeah, me too. Me timpani. too. I, I I'm a sucker for the timpani, uh, and the ins and the outs and the transitions and, um, yeah, Captain Phasma appears with uh, uh, this this timpani arrival and what like a horn mm-hmm. sting, little horn sting in there. Totally, it's like. I've tried to do this once. I can't emulate a timpani really with my voice. Boom. Okay. Boom, 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 boom. Boom. Is the sting. It's sort of a, it's like a forte piano, would you say? It's like a, yeah. so a forte piano would be like forte and it, it means like loud and piano means soft in classical music speak. And if you have like a marking that says forte piano, that sort of means like you attack it, but then immediately back off and that's what we're getting here sort of is the timpani so it's just it's the drums and then the horn or whatever the trumpet goes like boom 
And it's, yeah. it's, it's a cool effect because you get the, you get both the hit and you also get the sustain part of it. And it's this great timbre in it too. I, I'm, I'm debating still in my head, whether it's like a muted, muted. Yeah. brass or if it was a, a French horn with the, with, uh, uh, um, muting with a bell. Uh, muting the bell if you if you kind of like uh, uh, put your hand farther up the bell uh, you mute it a the little bell bit is the more. hole the, the hole yeah, where the uh, sound comes out either way it's a, it, either way it's muting though it's some sen- some sort of muting right it's got that nasally timbre to it is what it does what muting will do to a brass instrument yeah um, or if you don't know or if you don't know what muting is you might think of it as like the film noir sound is like the muted trumpet mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah that it's, kind of high. Like, it's, it's the high. It's it's. There's no low end to to, to mutes at all. Um, yeah. It's just high and nasally. Um, lots of good string things in this section as well. It's it's kind of just action impact music mm-hmm. uh, to me. There's there's. Did you unless you you caught any? Um, I mean, I didn't. Um, nothing specific that I. Nothing specific drew my attention enough um, to need to talk about it. But, yeah, it was like sort of action underscore type stuff. Um, And then throughout the minutes, of course, we get a lot of instances of various themes. So um, Captain Phasma. Why do you like Captain Phasma? Uh, Is it just a cool factor? uh, There's there's a little bit about that. Uh, (laughs) It's a little bit about that. It's a little bit of a... a, uh, how do I? How did I describe Captain Phasma to you the other day? Uh, the the character that could have been, the oh. character that could have been. The, the, she's there, and uh, when the Force Awakens was coming out, it was you, you got all these character images that they were teasing you with, and Captain Phasma was was the silver stormtrooper, uh, um, awesome power. You know, like menacing, intimidating. It, 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 going to be someone in charge kind of a thing and it was just always so cool to me that we were going to get this kind of a character and then also for me became such an interesting side joke trope to me uh entered the world i i'd say uh uh like the, the as the, the character kenny from south park who always gets killed off in each episode in some way and that's just a running joke in the show so i didn't Captain- know that yeah, yeah. Almost every almost every single episode, this character perishes in some goofy way, and <laughs> and then comes back to life the next episode. You know, who knows? Oh, but um, I'm gonna understand South Park jokes so much more now. <laughs> that's why. That's why I probably you probably heard me say Captain Phasma is the Kenny of Star Wars because <laughs> she appears and then she's defeated, and then she appears and then she's defeated and never really gets the reign of glory. Well, in that sense, everyone's the Captain Fa- everyone's the Kenny in Star Wars. Yes, that is true. <laughs> um, it's just also there's just such mystery and potential with the character. I I think and it's it's such an interesting uh a piece of these of this uh uh trilogy, this mm-hmm. this last trilogy uh, to introduce such a uh strong character and go not nowhere with her but yeah i see what you're saying you know Fair um it's, it's 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 just it, it adds to it also <laughs> i'm i'm a captain phasma fan in that sense all right all right <laughs> in that way Fair um, enough. Uh, um so then we move um, if i'm moving on and I, yeah. you have anything to add just interject but um Definitely. moving along leia wakes up from her coma, a sight to be seen, and then stuns Poe. Yes. So, <laughs> so it's a little bit of fun. a little buzzkill. Yeah, one of the funniest moments <laughs> because there's her daughter. I mean, her daughter in uh, in real life, and they both kind of put their hands up like, oh, "Don't I love us. <laughs> Like, oh no, yeah. mom's in the room. Cato, Coconix, um, and three PO are, are like, are, it's just the look on their face is so like i'm sorry like like a puppy or something like uh it's 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 one of the funnier moments in in the movie um especially one of the star wars movies that actually focuses so much on humor 
um, I would say more than the other, at least more transparently than the other uh, Star Wars, any of the other Star Wars, in my opinion. Um, but uh, did you find interesting uh, one? It's I feel like it's a it's a, a the main title comes in when Leia appears. Um, and uh, I remember just uh, that in the original, I mean, obviously these themes can mean anything. It's, mm-hmm. it's John Williams. <laughs> he can do whatever he wants with his themes. Um, it's traditionally usually represented for Luke, at least in the original, original trilogy. Like that theme was kind of, there's the main title and it was kind of the unofficial slash official Luke theme. Um, mm-hmm. And then obviously repurposed for the, the original, the prequels when there was no Luke. Um, and this one, it's it's kind of almost like a, a, a hero theme, just a general heroic theme for, and not that it's generally playing over whoever, but it, it's become like, because it plays a little later on with Holdo mm-hmm. um, and mm-hmm. Leia speaking. And I feel like in this scene, it's definitely representing Leia. In the next scene, it's definitely representing Holdo. Um, or Dern's character. Um. So my assessment is, first of all, like, you're absolutely right. Um, I noticed that a lot too, which is, like, the the themes aren't, they're not super strictly, they're not strictly associated with, mm-hmm. um, like, where we, with our initial instance of them. And I think that's pretty, I think that's all throughout Star Wars is sort of, the leitmotifs, they're, they're sort of fuzzy and, um, you know, things that are just like incidental can become more important leitmotifs and then leitmotifs can become more generic. Um, sort of like, for example, if Luke were one person and with his theme, do 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 and then Luke's actions impact other things and, you know, he becomes embedded in the fabric of the rebellion and the resistance and, mm-hmm. and things like that. Then I can see how, like, his theme is almost like, it's almost like the impact, it's part of, like, the impact that he's having and, like, the sort of strength that people are conjuring in those moments. You know, I don't think it, that's an expressly intentional like I don't know effect but it's also sort of intrinsically related right so like to talk about the rebellion um you know sort of like even I might in in daily life be like okay let me summon up my such and such vibes or like something like that um I think it makes sense and you're right it happens a lot and that's that's like one clear instance where yeah the main theme Uh has I now that, had has farther reaches beyond Luke, which is pretty great. cool. Which is pretty cool because I mean it's almost like a Skywalker theme, and then obviously it's 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 put elsewhere. I, I guess I another reason why I find the choice here to put that theme um, and why I wrote it down so uh, interesting is because partially because it would have been funny still, if not just a little funnier, if Leia's theme played and then she shot hold <laughs> because Leia's theme is so beautiful and just to have this she comes out of the the, the mist <laughs> bam <laughs> that is funny that could have also worked that's funny well <laughs> Um, uh, also, an, an, just another note, because I've, I've separated my little notes as like music, sound design, fun points, uh, things. Yeah, to, to, you say anything. Um, did you notice or did you get the vibe at all that this uh, um, Leia's entrance kind of mimics A New Hope? Um, it, it Not shot for shot, but in a way that, uh, so in the beginning of New Hope, uh, the, the... In her the, cell, you mean? No, in her capture. So in the very beginning of the movie, the stormtroopers, you know, blast through the door and there's smoke and lasers go everywhere and everyone's kind of waiting at the door. For some reason, I had this very, there's Poe 
with his blaster, almost hiding behind something in a very similar way. The door explodes, out comes Smoke. There he is waiting, kind of like what they were doing. And then out comes Leia instead of Darth Vader <laughs> or these stormtroopers. For some oh, reason, I'll have to of, go back and watch that. It, it kind of uh, uh, brought that up for me in almost a, not like a Easter egg kind of way, as, as I would say, but kind homage, of a, like, maybe. Oh, like an interesting homage of like, oh, yeah, here's her entrance and you know, through exploding door. <laughs> oh, interesting. Um, I didn't I, I didn't catch that. I mean, something that I just think is funny and, and also, you know, commonly in Star Wars is people entering from like smoke or fog that's the smoking door yeah are they are I they mean, waiting Holdo there? just did it like yeah. five minutes ago too is someone <laughs> waiting there is there like just release smoke on each door like is there is there an option to do it or not um. the canon <laughs> explanation in my head how how i'm interpreting it is like the way that the doors are maybe sealed is like it maybe pressure release when they're opened or something like that, but I don't really know. I I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Like, I don't know why a door would be, I don't don't know. Like, I don't, well, now that I think about it, I I was going to say that that doesn't happen on airplanes, but actually you do kind of see a little bit of, yeah, I guess maybe Mist it's like a like a like a, a heat condensation thing and that, yeah. that it's kind of spitting out. Um, and the more evil you are, the more it envelops the ground. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because um, it's like the tighter that you kept your door closed or something. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. This is very fuzzy, fuzzy physics. Sorry. Um, anyway, but <laughs> anyway, let's move on. More about the sound. So um, Holdo and Leia say their goodbyes. Mm-hmm. Um, Oh, I forgot to mention a, a motif already. At the beginning, we we get the... Okay, okay so that's it. Um, and then we get um, when Holdo says, someone needs to stay behind and pilot the cruiser. Um, and Leia says, too many losses, I can't take any more. She's like, sure you can. You taught me how. We get a... Oh my gosh, we have a flute in the house. <laughs> wasn't it enough, isn't it enough? I think it's a flute in the score, isn't it? Oh my gosh, I love this. There you go. Something like that. Woo. Um, yeah, and it it does the full cycle, and it immediately moves on to as their conversation progresses. It then immediately moves on to you know when they're exchanging "May the Force be with you." Mm-hmm. What am I doing? <laughs> Neapolitan. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's sneaky uh, which Neapolitan. We did an episode already about already because love it. Um, <laughs> Normally it would be, but it's, um, so yeah, that's a big throwback main title mm-hmm. to the forest theme. And then it mm-hmm. goes straight into a newer theme, which is the desperation. It's like the desperation motif. The, Before uh, we get there, uh, do you have anything to add? Um, nope. It's, we've got the first theme. <laughs> there it is. They said it, and we heard it. Um, it's 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 such a nice scene, though. Um, what's actually what's what's been really fun about this entire five minutes is that none of it is in the official soundtrack. Um, yeah. So when I was going in, like, oh, I'm gonna go just listen to the music it, for I these. I think part of it was in um, a new alliance. I think I, th- I think you're right too. That's the closest part I could find, and then it would. Uh, well, we're not there yet. Yeah. Right, but, but other than that, it's just kind of like, oh, okay. So we really gotta listen for um, underneath all the sound design and all the speaking. Um, but it was just a really nice moment. I liked the flute. I liked the force thing coming in. Um, 
And reminder, for those who have Disney Plus or I think have the DVD, you can listen to the score-only version. You can watch mm-hmm. the score-only version of this film. It's in the extras or whatever venue, and it's the very last thing. So keep scrolling all the way past all the d- deleted scenes, all the commentary, and it's the very last thing. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you want to hear the music mo- a little bit more exposed, then definitely check that out. So with Holdo and Leia's goodbyes, I mean, there is one other thing that I'd like to say about that, and that is like great acting. That's a really, uh, that's probably one of my favorite Carrie Fisher moments, Mm -hmm. especially in the new trilogy. I actually think, I mean, okay, I, I, I heard criticisms of her performance in The Force Awakens, or sort of just like, oh, she's maybe a little rusty or you know, hasn't gotten back into it or, or, you know, whatever, just sort of phoning it in, which I think I heard criticisms of all of the old actors, basically. And whether or not that's true, I think this specific scene is one where, like, I I, I feel like she's at her best. I would agree with you. I would agree with you. Um, I mean, I, 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 I think... Carrie Fisher's acting throughout this entire the entire Star Wars uh, run has just been fantastic, and you know people people have lives, people change, people uh, 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 go through so much. And if you ever take the t- if, if if listeners and everybody take the time to read some of the amazing books that Carrie Fisher has put out and the amazing interviews that she's done, um, she's very open about her life experiences. And uh, what what is kind of like you know led her up to these these uh, perhaps changes in her life, um, but anyways, uh, 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 but with the scene, uh, yeah, it's it's such a it's such a sad yet sweet moment because she just heard that she's gonna lose not just another you know like one of her closest friends at this point. Yeah, and she's and, already lost her like she knows that her son is basically it, no hope or like that's how she feels at least at the, t- exactly. at the time. You um, know, her, oh. She can't find her brother. Her, her uh, 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 ex is dead. <laughs> um, her, uh, uh, and the whole movie opens with uh, all of, we go all the way back to the beginning of the film, just such destruction and loss. And she says, right then we can't be doing this. We can't keep losing people. And there's one so more right. now willingly sacrificing herself. Hold those moments. Um, we don't know her plan yet, of course. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but Leia knows that this is going to be the last time that she sees her. And yeah. there's so much there's so much of a burden on Leia's shoulders. And she has to carry the weight of so many hopes and plans and just be like the support for everyone else. Like she saved herself from being blasted into space so that she could be there for everyone else to, to finish this mission up. Right. Right. And um, here, here's just one more thing that she has to go through. And I like that what, what Holda says, you taught me how to go through this. I are, she, you know, it's almost like I look up to you for this skill that I'm asking you to this thing that I'm asking yeah. you to do for me. And um, one of the things I actually love about their goodbye, and this is like a nod to the script, I bet, but it's not like they don't argue with each other too much about it. Leia just, she's very sad, but she knows what has to be done and she agrees uh-huh. and lets her do it. And we don't have to do this whole song and dance of like, oh, don't go. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. You okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like having an allergy thing oh, no. as as we're talking because suddenly I keep meaning to sneeze all the time. Um. Anyway, uh, so no, yeah, uh, yeah, all of that, and I also love the little. I think it's a nod to both the character. Uh, bless you, bless you. <laughs> um, both the character and the actress when uh, uh, Leia says. Uh, when they both try to say "May the Force be with you" at the same time, it says, "Oh no, no, no! I've said it too many. I've said it enough already. You do it." And then, yeah. although Lord Lord Dern gets to say "May the Force be with you always," I love I thought it. That was an, a nod to both the actress and the character. Agreed. Agreed. Um, it was nice. So yay that moment. 
And then I'm going to sneeze again. <laughs> Save oh. it. Okay. And then, okay, I'm holding the sneeze in. Um, we get to the, they, the transport leaves. Like, so they part ways. We see them, like, we see Holdo kind of leave through the her window. And um, Lama, what's her name? La, I keep forgetting her name. Larma? I, Darcy I or whatever? Is like, I, I hope this works name. or something like that. Is better, mm-hmm. Something like that. And that's when we get the desperation theme. And that is something that I think I talked about in the second episode. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Is that note sustaining? Okay, there we go. Um, yeah, so we get that, and it's it's a really strong brass statement. Um, yeah, do you have anything to add to that? Um, no, I actually didn't know that was uh, more of a motif that kind of comes in. Ooh, uh, just to I'll be explain, honest with you. I'll explain yeah. more of it in a second, but I'm going to grab a tissue. Can you just you, – you can keep sharing stuff. I'll, I'll – you know. <laughs> 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 Sounds good, um, which is which is hilarious now that you're saying that because uh, uh, just to let everybody know, uh, it is hotter than tattooing in here <laughs> right now. My um, air conditioning is broken, <laughs> and uh, it is of course the beginning of a heat wave uh, here in sunny, wonderful Santa Clarita, California. Anyways, um, no, I actually didn't know that that was a, a, a theme. I like that. Uh, it's it is something that I notice about John Williams's music, uh, these little tiny themes, these little tiny motifs that he's really really good at, either kind of generating out of thin air, I would say, um, which which I've I've kind of think is one later on when Poe wakes up, but uh, uh, it's these like little like John Williams fanfares that he's really good at kind of coming up with. <laughs> <laughs> um, these just this it's 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 like he mixes it real quick say like, all right this is the fanfare this time um something that's interesting it's good <laughs> something that's interesting about the little themes little motifs in this film or at least in the sequel trilogy as a whole um is that a lot of them are a lot shorter a lot of them are more motivic mm-hmm. um and This is an example of, like, I don't actually know if he had, like, bigger plans for it, but they're – okay, tell me if you recognize, like, this sort of thing. So that's sort of, like, a thing that we hear repeated throughout the movie. It's sort of like a – a tension or a desperation. Like a I'm not sure. Um, I'm not sure what Frank Lumen calls it, calls it in his catalog, but it's something you hear a lot. Mm-hmm. So we'll repeat it. It's like. Something like that. And that seems to develop into a more declarative, like with longer notes where it's like, Right, right, right. Yeah, so before when I played it, I played it a little bit faster than it usually is, but it usually is like, it usually is brass. Not, I don't think it's always brass, but it really is like dramatic. And And part of it, at first when I heard it, I thought it was like, a different phrase, maybe flipped or something. The the that sounds like um I don't know that that sounds like something reversed. What does it sound like? Uh, do you know what I mean? I I do know what you mean. It sounds like to me. He does that, like a lot, a lot of those like low cello. It sounds like something that would be like a slow, low, creepy cello thing. Mm-hmm. 
something like that, you know. Well, anyway, we uh, get it here. Um, and we are going to get it in future minutes too. So I, I did want to at least make sure that we touched upon it here because, hmm. I mean, it'll come up. It'll be more of a thing, I think, in two, in one or two episodes. Let's say the next two episodes, if you're interested in that theme. Um, I don't know. Keep uh, in touch. Keep in touch with the. Keep in touch with the show. Um, <laughs> that, yeah, keep listening the there. next couple episodes because that theme is going to really come to come to a head. That Interesting. It's going to okay. become I'm, very important. I'm going to go back and research that theme. I admit that I did not know that, or or haven't figured that yet. With I don't that, think it's uh, like a. I don't think it's one that like people widely know. I think it's just one that some music scholars have sort of figured out and mm. parsed together. So, yeah, the first person that I saw who actually notated that as a motif was Frank Lehman. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so there's that. Um, awesome. awesome. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Ha-ha. And then we're in Snoke's boudoir. Oh, uh, yes. <laughs> boudoir. <laughs> Handcuffs come off. Oh, uh, Yes. And uh, come closer, come closer, and uh, he reveals it has been him all along that has been connecting uh, them, connecting them with their uh, force connection, their their dyad, um, and uh, we we get a little bit of. I didn't feel so. This this was one of the scenes that was I was really sad. This part of the music that was not like in the soundtrack itself that I couldn't isolate. I don't have the uh, uh, the uh, the main the the DVD with the commentary uh, to, to to listen to the score because I couldn't entirely tell. It was very reminiscent of Snoke's theme, but it wasn't quite. It was the same low, uh, like. Almost vocal fry low. Do you know voice. Snook's theme? It's um bah, bah, <laughs> In other words, it's very catchy. <laughs> it's just very long. So <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because that's how that's basically how I feel about Snook's theme too, is like it's really low stuff. For yeah, it's just, it's just low. the same note over and over again, but really low, and I have trouble hearing it because my ear is just preference toward higher pitched mm-hmm. uh, things. And I had the same reaction as you. I was like, "This is probably Snoke's theme." It's probably, it's probably Snoke's, Snoke's theme. Snoke's it's thing. got the low. It's got the low voices, which I gotta say compliments Andy Circus's low uh, uh, voice so well. <laughs> He's got got the very much the same range, so it almost sounds like it's a choir of Snoke's, which is terrifying. Which actually, if you think about it, spoilers ahead for the next <laughs> movie, <laughs> we could have a choir of Snoke's. But let's it's not so funny imagine. you say that because I think episode four of this show is called Surround Sound Snoke, and we were talking about ah. <laughs> Snoke and Surround Sound. So yes, choir of Snoke's, Surround Sound Snoke. Yes. Oh, agree. Right. Yes. That yeah, it's just, it's just the choir the surround. <laughs> no, that sounds that sounds terrifying. Um, yeah, we get this. We got, and then we got the, you know the traditional uh, as as he pulls her forward. We got the the the, uh, the awesome force sound effects coming in. Those low, kind of like windy, uh, filtered wind kind of a uh, feels. It's got subwoofers, you know, uh, low speak, low uh, speakers designed for low frequencies. Um, you're gonna feel that, you know, um, hit you. And Can then you describe the, the, more about the force sound. When else do we hear this force sound? We we I mean it's it's got a couple of right. Be, so be, uh, as researching for talk, uh, being researching on the show. this, uh, the, being on this show. I, I thought I was noticing the four sounds and, and I thought like, I wonder if there is a sound per technique, if there's like a real correlation or, or are they just kind of the sound designers perhaps are like making it specific to each thing. So like if it's not that when like do every we hear time it? Like we, we hear it when someone's getting force choked, when someone's getting dragged. Yeah. Uh, someone or getting pushed. 
Um, not uh-huh. so much with like the electrical stuff that uh, Emperor 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 Emperor. It's more of the <laughs> like impact sound, like the. Yeah, it's it's like a it's like a pull. It's like a pull or a push to me. Um, it's like a sonic what... signal that something is happening, even though you can't see it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it and it's such a non pitched sound in a way it's 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 to me it just sounds like uh, not just but it's, it sounds like filtered wind this this whoosh, it's got direction to it it's got a curve to it it's got it's almost like a doppler effect sometimes um if it's pushing it's kind of like a low rumble whoosh, 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 almost and it, Ooh, I, I, I like that, that one um you know kind of but but a little faster you know it's <laughs> it does that a little yeah that um, reminds me of the hyperspace sounds too sort of like it's like the whirring mm-hmm. the, yeah um there's also sometimes i've noticed if if something's being picked up which to me is a pull like uh, in a way before it's pushed away something being picked up there's still like a whoosh, kind of oh, a thing like an yeah. uh, like an under so it's very directional the force is very directional and they really designed the sound for it to sound is is it like like when ray is being pulled it's kind of whoom, you know yeah because it's, 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 that sounds it's, like it's, it's going, going up for mm-hmm. up and forward and she, yeah and when when she stops it's kind of like a little bit more of a sudden rumble if it's uh i'm thinking back to all the things in like the uh, uh anytime we see any uh, force uh <laughs> Uh, a, a Jedi push droids uh, with mm-hmm. with the Force. And in that, that case, whoosh, it's a yeah. So like when like you did throw. when you did the Ray sound, do the Ray sound again. Like when he's pulling Ray. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> First you play flute, and now I'm just like making you do no, sounds on great. command. Um, it's kind of got the. No, that's not kind what of did. thing. That's not what I did. <laughs> it's higher. Okay, yeah. <laughs> It's yeah, kind of, yeah, it's, yeah. It, there, there's a pull to it. There's a. You so know. what I noticed in that is your, um, like my interpretation of your pitch went up. So it sounds like you're coming, you're going up. A very dramatic, um, like exaggeration of that would be like, whoop. Right. And then when you were doing the droid pushing away, it was like the opposite. It was like because you're pushing away, so it's getting. Do that yeah, one again. The, 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 no kind of a thing um but it goes down down away from you yeah but then and then we just make it a little less pitched and more windy you know you're good at at that (laughs) (laughs) maybe maybe that's why i got into synthesizers i just I, i did it so much with um uh, I got good at making the sounds with, with my voice, and I'm like, nah, I gotta do this. <laughs> I, actually, on the, one of the Bad Batch episodes, I recreated one of the sounds with my voice because I couldn't do it on a synthesizer. The clock I remember sound, that. I remember that. Everyone got angry uh, at me. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that's a great observation. I think I think that's something that people listening will probably now think of when we hear force sounds is like, think about the directionality of it mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. and how, even if we weren't looking, at the picture, if just via the sound, we could tell like what is happening, what movement is happening. Is something's being picked up? Is something's being pushed? Um, yeah, I think the sound definitely tells a tells a story there. Yeah, and I mean, and there's even I remember there's there's a sound I got a I can't remember it now, but there's a different even a different one for like when the dyad is happening when they're talking to each other. There's something that's happening. Uh, I don't think there's a sound for the meta Jedi mind trick. I think it just happens. Oh, um, well, oh yeah, yeah. Because the mind know, trick, well, the mind trick is not like a. Force, well, you, force. I think all the all the things that you're describing are or telekinetic physical. force powers, right? So, yeah, sort of like and, a. Yeah. And I feel like dealing with like more physical things. Yeah. Um, you're 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 like, again pushing, pulling, lifting. Um, mm-hmm. I wonder if this is. Uh, Fundamentals of Force 101 at the Jedi Academy, if this is how, you know, push, pull, lift. <laughs> yeah, actually, like, you know, I, I'm pretty sure. Um, but the mind be, trick would be, it makes sense that the mind tricks wouldn't have, wouldn't be in the same category. Because, right. yeah, all the all of those things you mentioned, the picking up, the pushing, the pulling, I think even the choking, they're all categorized in, like, um, in the telekinesis uh, 
uh, section, chapter, module uh, of the force. Ah, okay. Yeah, so it is a specific, uh, yeah, yeah. Aha, okay, good to know. Yeah, so I bet like I bet like <laughs> some force <laughs> users or even like people who just casually can pick up on the force sometimes, I bet there are some who are maybe better at the mind tricks and maybe there are some who actually have some little telekinesis abilities like Broom Boy clearly does. Yeah, um, <laughs> Broom Boy. <laughs> yeah, so so there you go. There, we, oh, we've, put, we've put the pieces together. Cool. We got it. Telekinesis sounds. Telekinesis um, sounds. Love it. So, so what else going. happens? So, so that's the sounds that are happening. Um, we've got these like uh, uh, they. I was. I, what did I? I wrote that. You know, we got low strings mixed with the voice. See, we've got these like little. I, I wrote them as uh, string ripples. Uh, these little. Hmm. Na 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 na. Na 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 na. Kind of like a thing. It's it's it happens like when. A, it happens like uh, um, before the big theme comes in. It's when they're talking. I think he's talking over her. Um, but they're, re- yeah, they're very low. Uh, it, it reminds me of uh, the sound that John Williams used for the uh, more the music used for the the T Rex in Jurassic Park. When there's a step, it'd be a boom. Boom. Uh, is it like tremoloed? No, it's almost like a, a da 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 da. It's a very like chromatic y oh, chromatic. thing. It probably was like cellos, not violins. Right. It's, it's, it, I think that's what it was. It's very low. So that happens. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, and then be, before we are, are we ready? Can we're we ready. can we get okay? Cool. And then John Williams decides to spoil it all for us for those who well, know. Well, oh, I, I actually listening. wouldn't. No, I actually I... wouldn't make that. <laughs> I actually wouldn't say that. But we do get. That's true. But we the do emperor's get the emperor's theme. The emperor's theme, yes, 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 um, yes. Emperor's theme do, which is watch. Do, 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 do. It's slower, actually. And this is when he tells Ray, what does he say? Uh, uh, give me or show me everything. Is he says I'm gonna uh, I'm I'm gonna keep, uh, uh, you're gonna tell me where Skywalker is, or I'm gonna strike you down with the cruel stroke, or kill you with the cruel stroke. He's like never. And he's like, too bad. <laughs> and sends her off and says, does the give me everything kind of oh. the hand, the hand. So the, creepy. The, the, the and then she's the, lifted the, up like and, uh, what, supinate in a supine position yeah, uh, on her s- back floating, though. And <laughs> it's very creepy. Yes. Um, and what's that? A. Uh, Daisy Ridley, what a great scream! I mean, I'm just saying, like, uh, it, yeah. it, it had, it had, it, it just, it was a very convincing, <laughs> a situational kind of a thing, um, and then added with the uh, uh, just the, the dissonance of everything rising, um, all the sound rising. Um, so first, which, let's talk about the Emperor's theme. Oh, did I cut you? I cut you off. No, 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 no. Okay. Uh, that's exactly so the Emperor's go. theme, like Snoke's theme, is also very low. Mm-hmm. So low in pitch um and it is slow it doesn't have too much movement although the emperor's theme has more movement than snoke's theme but still Mm. they're both very low creepy sith stuff which is how that stuff goes they're kind of similar to me i mean not necessarily harmonically but they move so slowly and they're so low that um their themes are almost more of an effect sometimes you know I, I would I oh, ah, I've got to disagree a little bit okay, because okay. I, I I love the Emperor's theme. Um, it's it's one of the themes that sticks out to me the most from the original trilogy. Um, really? I'm actually yeah. I, it, it it's one of my favorite themes for some reason. It's it has it it it's one of the most nostalgic themes to me as a kid Whoa. for some reason. My mind is blown. I, uh, I think it was the amount of times I watched Return of the Jedi. Um, 
Because I don't think it appears in Empire Strikes Back. I feel like it's a Return um, of the Jedi thing, but it's a very Return of the because because it really appears when he he shows up for the first time, and um, in in that movie uh, and that score, it's low, it's slow. It's definitely got a lot more movement than Snoke's theme, but it's also sung. It's always sung by this low choir. Snoke's theme is sung too. Exactly, which it kind of gives it this like. Interesting. I mean, pairing. Sith stuff in general is like whispers, singing. There's Whisper a lot more singing. like human um, voice in there. Yeah, and uh, uh, in uh, the in Return of the Jedi, it's uh, it's in G minor, and then in this movie, they he starts it on an A, and it's kind yeah. of an A minor y thing. Um, but yeah, I don't know why it's it's always been one of the more memorable themes to me. Also, which I also find funny. Um, and this is just the beauty of music and rhythm in general. Um, it's actually quite jazzy if you play it in the right way. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's kind of nice. Totally. Um, but, uh, uh, so yeah, the Emperor's theme. <laughs> that's that's going to rock, rock and roll. <laughs> so you know it's got a little you know bit what's of everything funny? in there huh. you know how Ray's theme is no <laughs> no <laughs> I mean I, I just say oh, I wouldn't see that's the thing though that's why I said John Williams was playing mind games on us see I don't and... I, I would not attribute these, this to John Williams necessarily though <sighs> I think it's so easy to put a, put it all on the creator, but I I don't think like for me I need proof that that was John what John Williams was thinking of, of before course, drawing true, a connection. Because like in this case where the Emperor's theme pops up, we we both noticed it wasn't on the soundtrack, so that makes me think that could have been inserted inserted by someone else. It could have been John mm-hmm. Williams didn't think to put it in the like cue as it was. So that is true. We that don't know. The, we don't necessarily true. know the origin. Uh, and how much was baked into it from the music creator, since there's a whole sound team. And that's you know, true. And we maybe there was some of that in the temp score, even. We That's possible, know. absolutely. Um, but the uh, the musical conspiracist in, in me, <laughs> it's gonna yeah, say it's, it's all as connected. long as you know it's and a conspiracy Williams, thing. He knew. He all know. No, they. He was dropping it. He was dropping the hint on us, or the team was dropping the hint on us right there, um, which is. Kind of a huge thing if you think about to hint at. Because this right. is like, before what if we John knew. Williams, right? This is before we knew that Ray was a Palpatine, and ostensibly before anyone knew, knew <laughs> that that was going to happen. happen. So, what if this were intentional and this whole thing were after Snoke's like, I did it all, I did it, blah, 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 you'll give me everything. I'll do. And then instead of hearing Snoke's music, we hear straight up Emperor Palpatine, like, if you were actually following those breadcrumbs and trying to and trying to see that, because you you only I think you only really notice stuff if you're looking out for it in the first place, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. then you would have you would have noticed that way before Rise of Skywalker came out because you you could have extrapolated that you know if you were which, like that which is person. insane because of how secretive these movies are and that they would let the sound team or and or John Williams do that. <laughs> Which makes me feel like that was just a happy accident. But still, it is kind of funny. It is funny. But so. but, but, but that's... Uh, I don't know about happy accident, though, because it's such a... It's such a specific theme. And it's it highlights... It's such an Emperor thing in, in Return of the Jedi. And to throw that in there... It, just, I mean, I guess it could just represent evil. Yeah, I was going to say, to go I back suppose. to what we were talking about before with the catch-all of Luke's theme being sort of like now a re- uh, just hero, do 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 and not necessarily meaning like, this means Luke's going to come in. Like, it, it has further meanings. I think the same thing can be said of the Emperor's theme and the Emperor's legacy is it's everywhere. The Emperor's legacy is, even without him, even if the Emperor were truly dead at this point, uh, his, I mean, his his legacy is undeniable. Um, right, you know, right. 
it's, it's, his, it's, his <laughs> Anakin, uh, uh, Darth um, Vader was his apprentice. Kylo Ren is like obsessed with Dar- his uncle, like the whole thing. Like Palpatine's already in this, whether he's in it or not. And I think it makes perfect sense hmm. for that theme to be like the evil thing that, I don't know, pulls on our pulls on our emotions more than Snoke's theme could. That's like the original, oh, e- the original evil. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, but again, it's it's just a funny coincidence, uh, per- perhaps. Yes, I stand by it. Coincidence stand, until proven. I stand by it. <laughs> I stand by it. <laughs> so I think it's really interesting that you. First of all, I I I'm glad that you found that theme really memorable because I didn't. And here I was about to say, oh, it's not really that memorable. See, ugh, music is so subjective. It's so subjective. Um, that was like one of the themes I noticed the least, the absolute hmm. least. And I think it's because of my tr- my upper frequency bias toward, huh. um, <laughs> toward things that I can sing or that I can like play on the violin. Like, right. yeah. you know, not things that are so low that it's like, Oh, let a bass do that. <laughs> but um, yeah, what's but what? But it is true that like the emperor's theme is intrinsically a very low pitched theme, which is yeah. why I think its instance here I think is really effective. It's really evocative here because as his theme, as the emperor's theme is playing underneath Ray being elevated, so it's this low. Imagine this very low theme. Maybe Justin, you can play it. Actually, I think does it play? Uh, does it play that whole thing? Yeah, so it does the boom, da, da, then the, the violins come in. Da, da, da. Right, so, okay, so Justin will play the Emperor's theme, and I will play the thing that they add in the violin on top of it, mm-hmm. because there's some very creepy dissonance happening. Yeah, actually. And I'm echoing so much. Oh, no. Okay. 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 All right, here we are. So pause on the first clash. Mm. Okay, now the next. Are you on the uh, the? Yeah, it's uh, it's I'm like on the an a. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, put it sharp. this way. Oh, there we are. There's seconds. There we are. There we are. Yeah, so and then the next how, one is well wait, let's sit on this for a second. So first we get this clash. And what note are you playing? A G. And I'm playing a G sharp. Sorry, an F sharp. Or a G flat. So that means they're very smashed together and it's a minor second interval. It's a very like they rub up against each other. Um and then the next change that the violin has is then I I <laughs> yeah. then I'm playing a G sharp right against an A which is another <laughs> same thing so basically G sharp and A are very close together they rub up yeah. like that and then so it goes yeah. you get and the, we talked a little bit about this in episode 16 ma- magic cave mirror whatever mirror cave magic tree with the tone clusters Mm-hmm. Just things like notes really close together. Um, so the effect that it had for me, hearing not only the dissonance with the actual pitches, but also just the stratification of levels and like where, you know, really, really low contrasted with really, really high, it was... It made me it, it made me feel like a sense of asphyxiation, sort of like how Ray is on screen, 
And of course, this is like just my interpretation, but first of all, the violin line is rising. So it's like the tension is mm-hmm. rising. The string is getting shorter, like something, you know, the air is getting squeezed out. Like it felt, and the rubbing of the notes together where it sounded almost out of place, um, that felt very much like suffocate, like squeezing, something being squeezed, like breath being squeezed yeah. out of you. And then yeah. when the violins cut off, that right after that is when Ray screams and it sort of is like a natural progression from the violin notes to the screams. So it's sort mm-hmm. of like a continuation of of the violin, which is more, the Emperor's theme is sort of more representative of Snoke and all the evil stuff. And it's like the violin is sort of more Ray's experience going through this right yeah. now. And it's a kind of a pulling. See, I was going to say something similar, actually. It's this. I felt, I felt you said, I like what you said, asphyxiation. For me, it was like a, a, a pulling apart, like being. That too. Pulled apart from two different angles. Yeah. Uh, in that way, in, in that sign, mean, how else would you be suspended by the force, force, by force, by force, force? Um, it's, uh, uh, yeah, uh, I like, but I like what you are, your analysis of, in a way, the high violins are Ray. And we, we, it takes out that kind of middle and middle mid range of the orchestra to kind of allow. Yeah, there's no moderation like here. No, it's it's just blasts, and it, and it even ends with like that a uh, 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 kind of this big brass chord happening. Um, what a tam tam, some big rush, you know, for yeah, I don't scene know what it was. for some scene change, you know, scene change sound. Woo. Yeah. Um, <laughs> um, what a moment. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the more, I don't know. I think it's ah. like one of my favorite, that's actually like the coolest, one of the coolest music moments for me in these minutes. I, I, but I'm a sucker for like when violin adds something cool. So, yeah, I, I like that. I'm a sucker for themes. <laughs> <laughs> I ah, uh, it's uh, anyways. We talked about it. Moving on. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, we're almost at the end of the minutes, and and after that, I guess we basically after that we're almost done, right? Yeah. Then I um, think so. yeah. The, yeah. Then Finn is wakes up. Or uh, Poe. Sorry. Poe wakes Finn. up. Yeah. Poe. And we get the what I call the the Poe awakening fanfare. The bum bum ba da 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 da. Can you play um, it? Yeah, I think. I'm going to try it. I wrote it down. Uh, uh, these are pretend to be trumpets. Oops. Right as he hits mm. uh, his hand, he goes, dun, 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 um, Again, we're not using Poe's actual theme. Nope. Nope. <laughs> it's this anguishy fanfare kind of a thing. It reminds me um, of the desperation motif. I mean, mm-hmm. a lot of the motifs kind of run together for me because they they almost feel like natural, like they naturally are maybe supposed to fit together in a way. But I feel this way about a lot of the military militaristic uh, themes. Is there are just so many similarities, rhythmically, yeah, harmonically. Yeah, that's kind of what I was call- what I was saying earlier when we were talking er- uh, uh, earlier in this episode. The the kind of the uh, these fanfares that can just kind of pop <laughs> out that are all kind of the same, but all kind of different, yeah. but all work. Um, it's it's action fanfare and dun 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 dun. Um, yeah. And I, I, the reason why I picked it out is because I was having a, a fun time trying to figure out the rhythm for a long time. I don't know why it took me for so long, but it, it, I can't tell if it's dun 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 with the dun dun landing on a downbeat. I mean, who knows? Um, <laughs> in the context of the of the scoring itself, but uh, or if it's it's if it's on an upbeat kind of a thing. Um, I think this is actually. Ha- I think John Williams is really good at obfuscating the rhythm and the um, like where the bars are lining up. 
because just yeah. think of how many people misinterpret the main title as when in reality it's mm-hmm. um, yeah. and it's a subtle yeah. difference and they and they actually sound the same if you're if you're not emphasizing any of the notes but yeah in the first episode um the cellist Erica Duke Kirkpatrick was talking about when she played on the score um I mean she noticed before she played on the score mm-hmm. but you know she explained the way that the rhythms line up in the score and how when she was a kid watching this, she thought it was, you know, the wrong way. She thought it was the other the other way. Which is hilarious because I've done the exact same thing. It wasn't until I played a Star Wars suite in high school band that I go, oh. Oh, yeah. I think the first time, okay. I think I only know it. Like <laughs> the first time I maybe saw Star Wars she music, I was probably like, oh, this is how the rhythm is interpreted. Oh, right. I feel wow. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so, no, it's, it's so funny that it. Uh, uh, he he's so good at doing that. He's really really good at doing that. Yeah. Um, I think film composers, I I, I think film composers in general have to be good at doing that because you never mm-hmm. know. Sometimes, some you know, sometimes you're working to the edit. Mm-hmm. So you got to be, be really kinda, agile with your rhythm, and your the, rhythm and the divisions and your of your rhythm for sure. Exactly. Um. But with something I really respect, at least, you know, about John Williams's way of doing it is that I've n- I never, in some cases, yes, but I always feel like he, he he's able there or they're able to craft a complete piece of music each time and not just a texture piece that can kind of be even his more textural all over the place things. I can still be like, like the, I always think like the battle of uh, the battle of Endor uh, track. It's just it's it's there's a couple little motifs and themes in there, but it's really just a whole bunch of bum ba dum bum ba dum, you know, like so almost cookie cutter. Like here's this four measures, here's this two measures, here's this four measures kind of a thing. But it's still like complete. Mm-hmm. Not, none of it seems missing to me or just like aimless to me. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, that's just something I appreciate about. I really love about these Star Wars scores in general. Me too. Um, do you have anything else so, to add? So we've got the realization fanfare is what I call it. Perhaps a, a what did I say? What I, the only other thing I had to add here was, I said perhaps a coincidence, but I'm pretty sure I heard all, I, I hear a horn come in after the words rebellion and rebel base are used. Um, I don't know why. For some reason, it, it, it this is the, the that stood out to me. It, it became again like a heroic, like a hopeful heroic sound and i know i think that's just a stereotype of the french horn sound especially with within movie scores um i noticed it too and i also i'm like not sure what that was it it it, it, it felt too perfect like mm-hmm. placed for to not kind of like ah hope rebellion rebels old right you know it was almost so specific that it was like sampled which i'm sure it wasn't but yeah yeah Oh, one second, one. Ah, one second, one second. So while he is uh, doing something, I'm going to review what the motifs were and the soundtrack for those keeping track. So we're about to wrap up. So the motifs were the tension, the generic tension motif, uh, the main title, the force theme, the desperation motif, um, Snoke, I think I may have heard a hint of Kylo, but I, I couldn't really tell. Um, but Snoke-esque. And then Emperor with the violin screeches. And then where we are in the soundtrack is sort of nowhere, but then also I think we are actually at the beginning of A New Alliance um, when we are in the in Snoke's boudoir. So the beginning of A New Alliance, I believe we do get in here, except then when the Emperor's theme is added, that is not on the soundtrack. So... That is the rundown of where we are motif-wise and soundtrack-wise. Um, Justin, do you have any any fi- any final par- parting thought? Uh, I'm looking at my notes here. Uh, no, I think Force sounds, Evil BB-8 sounds. Um, again, so much happened in this in these five minutes. Uh, so many things, uh, so many great scoring moments, so many themes in five minutes. <laughs> yeah. Um, 
Uh, but uh, thank you so much for having me on this show. This was so much fun. It was really fun. Thank you. Um, what? Where can people find you online? Uh, you can find me on YouTube. Uh, I believe it is uh, uh, is just starting up <laughs> a little bit. There's only two or three things on there. Okay, I'll put a link find, in the show notes. You can but find me on it? YouTube. Uh, it, I believe it is. See, this is how new it is. It's, I believe it is just. Um, uh, I'll put a link. Is, I'll put a link. We'll, we'll put a link. Yeah. You can find me on Bandcamp. You can find me on SoundCloud. Uh, Rain Goat Music. Rain Goat, like the animal music. Um, or you can search J.C. Scheid. S-C-H-E-I-D. Um, and you can also catch him on Saturdays. On Saturdays. Doing for Bad, Bad Batch, Batch music commentary streaming with me and with our friend James Waterman from episode three. Um, yeah. Looking forward it's to It's a lot speaks. of fun. It's a lot of fun. Um, thank you so much for listening. Thank you for the new, what is it? Apple podcast reviews and um, the newfound, uh, I, I had a, like a big uptick in YouTube subscribers. I mean, by uptick, I mean, I'm still like very small, but you know, um, <laughs> Meaning a meaningful new crop of audience members sent my way from Star Wars Explained. And so thank you to Star Wars Explained for having me on their show last weekend um, talking about Bad Batch. And um, I've enjoyed uh, hearing thoughts from the new listeners. And um, as always, I love hearing everyone's thoughts on Twitter and I've gotten a few great emails and I look forward to the end of the season I'm planning to do sort of a recap and um, a fact checking episode where if anything was sort of you know if any lessons were learned there's already been several things so if you do notice like glaring mistakes or just things that you disagree with or you know factual errors or things like that do let me know because then maybe it can be covered in the fact check, fact check episode, you know, or if the guest, if any guest said something that they super regretted, then, um, then they could, they can, uh, transmit those ideas on that show too. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah. If you listen on YouTube and you want to listen via podcast, this is also a podcast on all the normal podcast places. And if you're listening via podcast and want to, um, get a glimpse of our faces and a me going off camera because I had to blow my nose, which was super awkward halfway through, then you can uh, find Star Wars Music Minute on YouTube. Last but not least, big shout out to Star Wars Minute. Pete and Alex are were my inspirations for this show, and I'm very grateful to them for pioneering this format. Ah, well, thank you, Justin. Um, thank you, listeners. And I will be back next week for... Minutes 101 through 105 of The Last Jedi. Yeah, that's that's my ending. That's my ending. Awesome. Beautiful. I love it. Wait, Thank I you. should say the name of the show. I'll see you next week on Star Wars Music Minute. There we go. Hey, hey, hey.